We are broadcasting live from self-isolation, practicing physical distancing. So anyways, welcome to a big show today. My name is Greg Gerard. I'm the co-founder uh, of acanadatravel.com, a public speaker, small and rural community consultant, and 23rd ranked top 1,000 global travel blogger. That's a bit about my resume. Let me introduose you to the guy over oh, over uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Colin Gerard coming to you live from Merritt, British Columbia. I am the tech person, the back-end engine, the person that runs the show, really. <laughs> and you, I welcome you, like, you to you our like show. You like to think so. You like to think so. <laughs> So anyways, we are, uh, I think our nickname out there right now is we are the 18 brothers. Um, and of course, we have a lot of interesting programs that we implement for small and rural Canada and also for the tourism industry. Hey, call. 37 great. days self-isolation. I know. Isn't that crazy? That is so crazy. Yeah. Like, it's unbelievable. Um and, and you know what? Yeah, it ain't that bad. It ain't the best of both worlds, but it's it's not bad, right? And it's gone by pretty quick. Yes, it and has what gone we're hearing, by. From what we're hearing, if people continue to self-isolate, it may be over quicker than we think. Yep. Not over, but uh, onto a new reality. Maybe. Uh, yeah, so what we're going to do, let me just... Um, Go over what we're going to talk about today with our uh, with who we have online and what we're going to do. We call it the A agenda. Pretty hey. original. Pretty original, eh? <laughs> so, That's brainstorming for you. Oh yeah, I mean we 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 don't we pull out all stops here. High budget. Yeah. So uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the things tourism business owners can do when they're self isolating. We're going to our guest tonight. I'm so happy to have her on board. Is Mary Doyle of Rural on Purpose, and I'll, I'll let you. I'll tell you a little bit about her a little bit later in the show. Then we have a tourism update. Uh, we've gone in and we've dug in the archives and gone and done our little thing and looked around, and uh, we've got some really interesting tourism statistics. It ain't pretty. Um, but I believe you said it last week, Colin. We don't do spin. <laughs> I believe so, yes. Yes. Then we're going to have our most famous episode, our shameless plugs. Oh, and that's uh, favorite. That, yeah, that's my favorite. We get to tell you a little bit about the new programs we're putting into place. Uh, we also get to share with you some of the things that we're seeing out there. And then we're going to finish with Q&A, which is E-H-A. So it's a Q&A. So question and answers, but Canadian style, call. That's right, eh? Hey, look who we have. We got, oh, we got our friend here. Let's just say a couple shout outs. Uh, Yano. Howard from Merritt, British Columbia is joining us tonight. Hello, Yano. Thanks for Yano. joining us. Well, uh, Yano, just so you know, she's an art guru here in Merritt, British Columbia. Nice to see you, Yano. So um, I guess let's get right into it. I mean, let's get into the nuts and bolts. I mean, that's why everyone is tuning here. Uh, we are your small town specialist. We love the small towns. Uh, we have a lot of friends on the front line of tourism that we care about deeply. Uh, and we're going to share with you a lot of interesting statistics. And Mary Doyle's here, Colin. Right on. Yep. So it'll be let's an start educational out. experience. What's that? It'll be educational. I'm interested to hear what she has to say. Oh, I think couldn't ask for a better guest right now, considering that uh, she's an advocate for small town and rural uh, entrepreneurs and uh, businesses. I think it's a, a great guest to have on right now. And I'm, I'm really excited, like you, I'm assured, um, I'm really excited to hear what she has to say. Yeah. Right? Uh, we got a whole bunch of people here talking. Uh, we'll get to you. Don't, uh, we got some uh, comments here uh, on all our different social media platforms. So we will definitely get to as many of you as possible. So what we're going to go, Colin, is 10 ways tourism business owners can make the best of self-isolation. Now, 
it's it's not it's it's tough. We got our businesses. We're taking a beating. We're here in self isolation, but you need to think outside the box. Yes. So what we have done again through our talking with our experts, our um, strategists, and influencers and small businesses, and of course our own personal experiences because. Hey, call. We're in self isolation, and we're coming up with all these different programs. Which um, the COVID pandemic has basically put us into that position. Yeah. So I'm not going to cover all ten because we only have a you know it's not a six hour show. Um, God knows we'd love to have it a six hour, but hey. <laughs> uh, so let's the first thing, it. let's talk a little bit, and this is where you might be able to help me out. Call is. Um, Cleaning house. We all have a list on our computer of things we would have loved to do, um, but they're a little bit tedious. They're not the funnest things to do. But in self isolation, I mean, why not? I mean, for myself, I could tell you a little bit about um, when I'm got some spare time. And even though we're in self isolation and things are going on, it's quite busy out there. One of the things I've been doing is one, my desktop's a mess. So I've been clearing that off. The other thing is I'm sort of trying to categorize my emails because, you know, we get a ton a day and it's easy to get behind on trying to put them in their folders and doing all that rigmarole, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we're also, one of the things is the hard drive. So, I mean, take yes. stuff off and free up that hard. Doesn't the hard drive call in, and you're the technical guru, um, <laughs> If my hard drive is a pack, does that slow? What does that do to me, my computer and to my working environment? Well, it slows everything down once they run out of a certain amount of, of space. So, I mean, it's best to uh, clear some off and keep a lot of room there because you'll be happier with your machine. Okay. And uh, it's a good time, like you say, to just clean things out and, uh, you know, make sure you run your virus software, get everything running properly. And get your software working properly. So we all know that uh, a lot of times software doesn't really work as we wish it would, and uh, takes a lot of time to uh, to get business stuff done. You're not efficient. So yeah, I'm a big believer in having sharp tools in your toolbox. Everybody's got oh. a different toolbox, but it's a great time to sharpen your tools. Gotcha. Got. And what about um? How about programs that you haven't? used in a long time that sort of you've, you've worked your way out of it's probably good to go into your uh, your settings and maybe delete a couple of them that take up all that room right for sure if there's programs you haven't used in a while uh, get rid of them yep. <laughs> okay yeah um, another, another thing that I think uh, tourism business owners can make the best of self-isolation is if you've got a website and you've got access to it I think it's important to refresh it, give it more content, because Colin, correct me if I'm wrong, but internet usage and social media usage is through the roof right now. And it, tourism, when it comes back post-COVID, when tourism and we face this new tourism reality, the internet is going to be how we win or lose this game because everyone is using it. We're all forming new habits. We're all figuring it all out. We're trying new features. Correct me if I'm wrong, bro, but if if after this post COVID, mm -hmm. if you're sharp on the internet and you're built your website and you got search engines and you're doing social media, you got a great head start on everyone else. Yes, I, I agree with you totally. And that's a very good point that people are learning more how to use the internet and how it works. Yeah. And uh, the better the better your website is working, the more business you're going to get out of it. I mean, now's the time to, to streamline that as well. Make sure it loads fast. Make sure you have it on a secure um, system and yep. um, improve it. Google loves new content. Yep. Google's going to position you better for a refreshed website. Mm -hmm. And when we come out of this, this pandemic, everyone's going to be on the Internet. And you're going to win or lose there, man. If you're not ready, if you're not sharp, if you're not, you know, learning all these new features and new programs, because if there is a little bit of a, a light at the end of the tunnel of COVID is all these new programs are being developed and coming on the market right now because we're all in self-isolation. Is, is that wrong or right? I believe you're correct there. I mean, there's lots of uh, programs such as the one we're using that are focused on communicating with people. 
getting your shows out I and mean, there's lots of people who have um started doing little videos for their businesses which is fantastic yep you know people learning how to promote themselves online which like you say especially for tourism is the future is that a right lot of people are definitely spending a lot of time on the internet i mean usage has gone way up people are joining groups meeting new people making yep. new friends and like we sort of touched and kyle touched on it and other people are touching on it here is uh we better get social fast. Um, you know, prior to COVID, 51% of travel decisions were influenced by social media. Now that has to have gone up, <laughs> right? I yeah. mean, it has, to, everyone's getting better. Everyone's using it more. It's going to go mm -hmm. up. So social media is going to, in, social media is not a booking tool. Let's get that straight. Social media is an awareness tool which gets you people to your website to whatever pro whatever end landing page you want it to have on so with social media um it's a good time to start learning some tools on how to make yourself look great on social media so a couple tools that i'm going to throw out there and these are free a couple programs to take note one is canva c-a-n-v-a it's free and it helps you build facebook banners ads it helps you build twitter instagram and it's all drop and play and you can upload it's a really cool program so if and it's important that we change our headers all the time we run self promos contests and so forth but if you want to like up your game a bit and look a little bit more professional try out canva another one is hootsuite now everyone's heard of it but boy what a time saver you can manage all your social media from the dashboard on Hootsuite. Plus, you can plan up to three different uh, social media pages through Hootsuite. And I think you can actually schedule it up to 30 posts. Uh, yeah, I know my chair is squeaking. I, we were just talking about that. We got to get <laughs> some oil. But then I was going to suggest that for your uh, COVID uh, yeah. uh, self-isolation, maybe you should worry about oiling that squeak. I know, but here's the thing. That means I'd have to get out of self-isolation and go and uh, and get the oil. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'm prepared. I got <laughs> my A Canada mask, so I can go out now. Yes. So I can go, and I have to get the oil. I'll try to control my squeaking. Next, um, let's just change it a little bit here and let's bump it. Let's go. Here's one I think people should definitely do. I'm a big proponent of this one. If you are a business owner and you are in self-isolation, nothing improves your business better than education. Okay? Learning. Unfortunately, a lot of us stop, but learning. Okay? So here's something we call it, I call it, Sherlock Google. So that's one. I think Google alerts. The other one is, hey man, give Netflix a rest. I mean, <laughs> come on. Why are we binge watching when we could binge learn? So what I think everyone should be doing is we should be attending YouTube Aversity. <laughs> Go to YouTube, find out what you're passionate about, find out what you want to gain. If you want to work on SEO, if you want to work on whatever, go to YouTube Aversity and binge watch what you want to learn and get good at it. Whatever so, interests you, you can find anything there from people that know what they're talking about. Yep, yep, I totally agree, right? Um, other ones, let's go to this. How about learning a new program? We've done it. Um, you know, if you, if you need to improve your email list, uh, your customer relationship management program, um, there's always add-ons you can get that are for free. Uh, you can also get a new graphics. If you want to up your game for your own marketing materials, you can get a new graphics, learn a program, start a mailing list, get a video program. I know we did that uh, a while back. We got our own video program so we can do our own editing. You know, call. Everything we thought that was going to happen in the next three years, we got to throw out the window. Whole new playbook. It's a whole new playbook. So I know with our three-year plan, uh, it's definitely taken a right turn, U-turn, and a little bit of an uphill climb. 
um, <laughs> because of COVID. Yeah. So I think one of the things that we're working on uh, with some of the influencers we work with is to rewrite your business plan. Perfect time to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of information out there that would help everyone rewrite their business plan. Um, so again, rewrite your business plan because when, with down the road, three years, a month and a half ago, it's gone. There's a new tourism landscape coming, a new tourism reality coming. And um, yep, throw it out the window, business plan, business plan, throw it out the window, <laughs> write a new one. Um, here's another piece of advice that uh, I would like to give uh, small business owners who are in self-isolation is um, I hope to God you're not waiting for the tourism associations to bail you out because they are in flux. They are in trouble. They are asking for bailouts. Um, they are going there. It's going to be a new landscape and it's not just how people travel. It's also going to be how the associations reconfigure, how they restructure, and what their message is. Well, we know what their message is. Staycation. Staycation. I agree with that. Don't like that word, staycation. I like placation. But mm -hmm. we're Canadians, you're going to have to buck up, and uh, we're going to have to travel Canada. Mm -hmm. um, international borders are shut down. I mean, let's face it, very few are going to come. It's going to be Canadians that are going to have to fuel the tourism industry um, for the next. And again, here's where there's a lot of giveaways. Some people say in six months. I don't believe it. Uh, one report I read said a year. I still don't believe it. Um, I don't think they're accounting for the three months of summer, which is the peak of their revenue. And they're not. Somebody said six months. Well, in six months, we're in October. So sorry. <laughs> it's done yeah. so there's no recovery in six months no there's a recovery either this summer next summer or the summer after and that's brass tacks that's what that's what we're looking at mm -hmm. all right so industry update these are um these are sobering numbers and again we don't spin it because i think you guys need to know what's going on so you can make those right decisions but these numbers are staggering right and uh i think but let me just share they're saying right now the tourism and the hospitality industry <clears throat> their gdp has dropped by 75 percent wow so with the uh tourism update here's another thing in bc alone <clears throat> eight out of ten businesses have closed in tourism hospitality or have reduced operations but that's not the scary part up to there's an up to 75 percent cancellation rate one in three businesses in bc have closed permanently wow look in your community count out the tourism businesses one in three and then in canada the average depending on which report you're looking at is one in six or one in ten so there's a lot of going on out there. There's a lot of things going on out there. And Colin, we love guides and outfitters, right? Yes, we know sure. a lot of them all across Canada. Adventure keepers, anything um, you want to do, really. Anything. I mean, we're the adventure capital of the world, um, I think. And um, yeah. here's the sad part is we know a lot of them. But 50% of the guides, based on this report, I got off of uh, XYZ Association because I'm not plugging them. Um, <laughs> they have fifty percent of guides and outfitters are not opening this year. Fifty five zero, mm -hmm. right? One in five of our outfitter friends across the country close permanently. There's a new tourism reality coming, and as we need to all work together, frontline tourism and a Canada. Um, again, no plugging, you know how I feel about the <laughs> other guy. So we're not plugging any of them. Here's a staggering stat is Helicat Canada is 32 to 43 million in sales. They've lost insight West. 92% of small businesses are impacted by COVID 82% of small business owners report negative impact until the end of 2021. And I think it's three summers and who to better talk to us about small and rural Canada. Mary Doyle, 
of Rural On Purpose. So I'm going to bring Mary on our show, and Mary is going to share her expertise. She's uh, she's brilliant. She does public speaking. She's a writer, and she's a program developer. And so I am going to like to welcome Mary Doyle to our show, and welcome Mary, Mary Doyle to the show. Welcome Mary. Hi Hello, guys. Hello Mary. How are you this fine night? I'm doing great. I've been enjoying this show. You're doing a fantastic job, and uh, and thank you for the invitation. I really appreciate this. Oh, yeah, we you love having time. you on board. Glad and, to have uh, you. Thanks well, for being a guest on the A Travel Talk Show. I love it. Um, love it. And uh, what we'd like, Mary, we, I know we've been getting a lot of feedback because we've been telling about everyone you're coming on the show, and and we have a lot of our clients um, that are really interested in this stuff. So maybe Mary to start off, if you do not mind, is um, all right. I'm happy to do that. I just wanted to say one thing before I started. When you were talking about tips, I want to add to the the tips. You were talking. Yes. You were talking. Well, you were you were talking about new habits and how we're all we're all home doing. You know, spending this time in isolation, we might as well come, you know develop new habits. We just had on Sunday our fourth. Sunday in a row, we had a family dinner on Zoom. And so we had, nice. it, it, it's great because we have six households that all come together and we just eat our dinner together and talk like we're in the same room together. Yeah. And and it gives everybody a chance to kind of catch up and, and talk about the things that are going on with them that week and, and just to check in with everybody, with parents and grandparents and, and kids and everyone. And uh, it's it's I think it's going to be something that we keep doing even after you know we get to leave. So yeah. I just yep. wanted to, I want to throw that in there because um, you were talking about you know creating new habits. Yep, That's and I, I and, and you know what that Zoom program has taken off really fast. Yeah, and uh, I agree. I think Mary, one of the things with that Zoom pro, I think there's a lot of new stuff coming around the bend for small and rural businesses, tourism. There's a lot of new programs. I, I think everyone's readjusting their thinking mm -hmm. with this new uh, tourism reality and the new small and rural Canada. I mean, it, 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 there's a lot of stuff. And, and again, that's why I think it, it's our, our listeners, our audience, um, I really would like them to know what you do because I know you, you do a lot for small and rural Canada. And um, we ourselves are very passionate about it. So I really would like if you take a second to start us off is maybe fill them in about all the work you do. All right. Um, I am the co-founder of Rural on Purpose and it's a social purpose business focused on um, rural community development basically. And it's not just Canada. We, we work with, with communities all over the place. We're working in Australia. We're working in different place, different parts of the U S and um, we've, uh, we realize that a lot of the issues that we're we're dealing with in rural Canada are the same issues that people are dealing with in rural communities all over the place. So why not work together? Why not you know collaborate and and uh, if you have a solution in one spot, why not share it and and try and um, develop something that's even bigger, something that's going to have more impact. So it's really grown, and um, I'm a I'm a, a Gen Xer. So I'm a child of the eighties. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, you can't, you can't start a business without having a, having a manifesto. So we, uh, you know, we created a manifesto and I'm going to read it to you because it really, um, this tells you everything you need to know about what rural on purpose is. Nice. So we are fearlessly optimistic people living in rural communities. We believe that entrepreneurship is a vehicle for change and a mindset of growth. We don't fear the future. We have faith in it. Yes. Constraints are simply catalysts for innovation. And today we have the opportunity to transform, augment, innovate, and connect like never before in history. And we are changing the course of our rural communities with our own wit, wisdom, and ingenuity. We are living rural on purpose. Wow. I love it. I and like that it. That is awesome. I like I want that on a t-shirt. Well, yes. <laughs> it's, it's on the back of my t-shirt, actually. There you <laughs> go. Nice. <laughs> nice. I love it. 
it's That's um awesome. but the thing is we 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 developed that um two and a half years ago and i don't think it's ever been more relevant than it is today so um it's it's important it's important work and you're doing you know it because you're doing it every single day too you're working with rural communities and and uh you know that that special connection that you have with with a group of people that are mm -hmm. passionate about their home and yeah. they they want to do everything they can to make sure that it's it's viable and and vibrant and 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 that they can have a place for their kids to come back to um and it's just it's really it's 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 passionate stuff you know you you really feel something about the work that you're doing when you're working with a rural community I totally agree there's i don't think there's um there's not a lot when you leave a community and you enter a community there's so many connections you take with you and they're teaching you as well and yeah. that's the nice thing there's an exchange of education um and they are generally extremely passionate um and they love their communities and i think a lot of times they they have all these they, they just they embrace anyone who approaches them in a respectful manner and provides them with ideas because that's what they want they don't want all these template letters and all these all these they want ideas and they want something that's going to help their businesses grow and help their communities grow and bring that new money in so yeah it's interesting you know i i uh, i read a lot of your blogs um i i, I love them i love them i do i love I them do. i think I connect with a lot of what you said and there's one blog and I, I just want to bring it up you also uh, I read it somewhere on one of I think it was rural on purpose earlier this year you spoke in Spokane Washington about reframing rural and urban divide which I thought and then I read your blog which was I think called divide ed Thank and you. Um, I, I was blown away because I thought it was brilliant and you hit a lot of key points um, how does COVID change this uh, I think it makes it even more important because rural and urban relations, you know, they've been, we, they've been strained for a long time. And, um, I think that once you start to realize that we're, we're really two sides of the same coin and we need each other to survive. Um, and if, if you can accept that, then the only thing you have left to do is to actually find ways to work together. And if we can create pathways back and forth that, you know, are easy, whether it's, you know, with education or, or business or, um, or tourism, I mean, it's really important that we, that we find ways to work together. And um, when I was speaking in Spokane, I was, I was talking to a mixed group of, of um, community builders from urban and rural settings. And um, it was really great because I got a chance to address the same two different groups in the same room at the same time. And they were all working together and they were all really collaborative and really um, excited about looking for ways to, to strengthen their relationships. And, and so, you know, I think COVID, I, there, are, there are places where it's a little bit strained. I've I've talked about this. Um, we one of the things that we're we're dealing with right now is um, is the the whole cottage time because yeah. you've got we've got communities that are they go from four thousand to forty thousand in a matter of months in terms of population, and during the year when it's the population is four thousand, they they do not have the the hospital capacity. They don't have the the grocery store um, supplies. They don't. They do not have the the um, the the infrastructure to support this influx of people coming into to their cottages mm -hmm. early, and it it's causing a lot of problems. So for for a lot of people all over the place, not just in Canada, all over, they're struggling with with that whole issue. And I get it because we're supposed to be self isolating in our our homes, but it is also a home a cottage is somebody else's home as well as the second home and if you were really if you were living in a in a tiny little condo in in the city 
and you're you've got this option of of living someplace where it's open and spacious and you can you know be by the lake and someplace where it's it's peaceful and and you know you feel you feel good you're going to want to be there and it's with rural communities we we depend on on our our tourists and we depend on our cottagers and they that's a big part of our our development and they're friends too so it's really yeah. really strained and hard right now to be able to, to have to say please don't come because we can't support that if if anyone gets sick or if you know you know gets into nursing homes which which it is right now and and we're, we have tragic consequences yeah. um it's it's really it's about it's about having those really hard conversations but doing it in a respectful way and understanding that everybody has a point of view and everybody has a um has has a a, a different way of understanding it and um, just uh, just when you just talk about what it is that that needs to happen and try and find ways to to work with it with each other i think i think that it starts with a conversation i love it yeah so if, if that's the case then what are what are some of the new challenges then if 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 this is the case that we have that cottage, what are some of the other challenges do you see as a small and rural entrepreneur? What are they dealing with now? What's in their heads right now? That, that's a really great question. Um, technology adoption for sure. It's mm -hmm. it's you've talked about it already in the show, and I think that it's it's key and it's going to keep coming up as as a as a major point. We in some most rural communities. It, you know, infrastructure, digital infrastructure is a challenge as it is. So yes. high speed internet is a really, really big issue. We need it. And it's been, it's being highlighted so much more now with, with this crisis. And, and hopefully it's going to speed up that, that infrastructure development. But when you're, you already have it and you're in a, in a community where, um, you know, you haven't depended on a website for your business up until now, all of a sudden things got very real overnight and you realized if you want to keep your business running at all, you need to have an online presence and yeah. you need to be really working, working that. And so businesses that didn't take that as seriously before because they didn't need it um, are all of a sudden trying to play catch up. And, and uh, so that's a, that's a really big need and mm -hmm. it's um, something where I think a lot of people are, are looking for support. Do you, do you um, to just touch on that, because I think you hit a very valid point that we're hearing as well, is that this whole situation that we're facing right now, do you think that this is a loud enough voice to get across to the people that we need high speed in rural communities? Because every, every, all the information now is internet, and do you think this is enough to push a little bit more action to get that where we can get Canada-wide high speed? If we don't get it now, we're never going to get it. I mean, if you think about it, think about the the money that's being spent right now um, on everything, and we're we're talking about something that's a basic necessity now. It's if you if you think about it, if you do not have high speed internet, you don't have access to on demand news. So you can't even go and look look something up and figure out what's happening in the world or get information that you need immediately if you don't have high speed internet and mm -hmm. and you know we we need it for healthcare we need it for for our business we need it for education you can't have online education if you don't have online um, capabilities so Thanks. if we yeah. don't get it now if if it isn't if if we don't push this really hard um, it's we're never going to get it and that itself is really scary. That, that itself is really scary. So, the communities again, that it, don't, yep, go sorry, ahead, Colt. Greg. Uh, the communities that don't have it are at a disadvantage to other communities, your kids, your businesses, your education. So we all got to all be on the same playing field. And and we have to we have to be advocating for ourselves all mm -hmm. the time and advocating really hard because if 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 we if they don't realize if the if governments don't realize that we we need this because we're not telling them that we need this 
Um, it might be an easy thing to put, you know, down the list of, yes. of priorities. And I, I, I'm afraid that if we, we get passed over, um, we're not getting it. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be the 10 years that, it, that we were told it was going to take to get it across Canada. So. So I think it's it's like uh, the tourism industry, small businesses, yourself, people like us, we need to speak up. Uh, we need to get the message out there because we're hearing it also. I mean, we've got uh, quite a few clients on our on, uh, on the feed here and many of them are in small towns, population 200, population 500. Um, and and they and they got pretty bad internet. And the thing, another thing too is, is because of what's going on, everyone's on it, so it's worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, you've got education. All of the kids are, you know, they're online learning now. And, um, you know, you're creating a digital divide um, if, if you're making something like that mandatory and you have places where they don't have access to, to internet. So, yeah. Um, so what what are you seeing out there, Mary, for programs, platforms, innovations? What are you seeing coming around the corner? What what's exciting you? Of what you're seeing in the technology field that um, you've heard or you've been talking to that is 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 maybe a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, well, you're talking when you're talking specifically about tourism. I I think that you know, thank you for doing the work that you're doing because, you know, we, it is so important. It's such a big part of, of rural communities, such a big part of Canada and, and our tourism industry is being decimated and we need to support everybody in the, whatever way we can. And mm -hmm. so when you're giving them tips about what you can be doing in this, in this, you know, time when they can't be out doing, um, the, the regular work. I think that's really key. One of the things that I, I think um, I think that that people can start looking at is when you're when we are out and we are creating um, our experiences again, our tourism experiences, if if we start to look at diversifying as well and not just focusing specifically on one thing that is going to generate your income, you start planning to diversify and planning to um, to develop content that you can sell as well. Mm -hmm. I think that that's going to be really important. You're generating content with with something like this, with with a show like this. So you've also got something else that that is is saleable. And if you think about um, you think about the personalization that's happening as that's something that's happening in, in every industry. And that's, that's a trend that's not going to go away. And we use that in, in the tourism industry um, as a marketing tool. So if someone leaves reviews for you, you use that to market your service and get more clients to come in, more customers to come and use your service. If, if you get really good reviews, but there, those people are also telling a story. So why can't you use that story and and build content around that? Because everyone loves to loves those stories about people who are experiencing things. Create content around it and start using that as another another way to, to sell your services. And um, and it's just a way to diversify. Uh, and I, and I think you hit it on the nose because that's that's the one thing when we go in and talk with these communities and we're and we're explaining the uh, experience community program. Um, we're showing them how every facet, every sector of their community can create content. And the content is not a one day shelf life. It's a three, four, five year shelf life. If you build it properly with the right type of tools and the right type of teachings, you can have content that stays on the first page of Google for a very long time. And I totally agree. I think a big part of diverse diversification is identify your target market and build content and attack it and just attack it and just attack it and that's how you're going to build new new services that's how you're going to build a new uh bring in a new new money from a different group opposed if you rely just on fishing um you might want to bring in the hiking because you got trails in the back so go after the hiking crowd and go after the germans who love backpacking from the cottage and those type of things so yeah i think you're bang on there if mary if you were to give advice to um Anybody out there, let's say, for, and being an entrepreneur is tough as it is. You know that. I know that. Entrepreneurs, it's a special person. 
because it ain't easy and everyone thinks it is but it ain't easy there is ups and downs lefts and right roadblocks bumps and bruises it comes in all shapes and sizes so if you were to give advice to a small and rural entrepreneur what would you what would you tell them i would say um find ways to integrate technology into your services whatever whatever that is going to look like for you um really focus on developing some um technology solutions and that might even be something like taking a look at where virtual reality is going and and looking at creating experiences that that people can pay for that they don't where they don't have to actually be there so we know that when this is this is over people are not crossing borders and they're get, not getting on planes yes right so Bingo. how do you sell to people your 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 tourism service how are you going to take them on a dive how are you going to take them through a, a tour through a cave how are you going to take them you know on a on a horseback ride how are you going to do those things um, when they can't travel. Well, there are lots of ways to use technology to do that. And mm -hmm. if you can start thinking about those ways and getting really creative and, and, um, and looking at, at uh, technology to use that, to develop those services, I think that you're going to be farther ahead. Awesome. Dude, I'm loving this. I wish we could keep you on for another six hours, Mary. You don't mind. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> So Mary, before we let you go, um, is there anything that you would like to leave with our audience? I got a whole bunch. I hope you stay on a little bit longer and watch us on Facebook. So I got a whole bunch of good, really good comments here about you and about what you're what you're sharing. And I can tell you right now, they appreciate it. Um, is there anything that you would like to share with us um, before we let you go? And uh, I know what time is it there? Uh, it's uh, almost eleven. You're an amazing, amazing, amazing woman. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm having fun, so thank you. Good. Is, is there anything that you want to leave with our audience? Um, any Anything you want to leave about Rural on Purpose, what you're doing next, just, plans? Yeah, just just follow us, and we're, we're doing the same thing that you are, that everybody else is doing. We're taking a look at where we're going um, post-COVID and how we can help and support businesses and, and rural communities. And so all of that's changing and it's developing daily. So if you go to our website, ruralandpurpose.com, it's going to take you, you know, down the path and, and uh, it is changing daily. So just kind of keep an eye on it. And um, thanks for reading, reading the blogs. I appreciate that. Appreciate the support. I haven't missed one yet. Not going to start now. Um, awesome. where, can they, where can they find you, Mary, on social media if they want to follow you? anything at, just at rural on purpose for any of those platforms um and linkedin is just mary mary doyle and uh, i'm open to linkedin invitations if you want to connect and, and do some professional sharing so excellent uh i will recommend to the audience and to uh the followers because we will be sharing this on all eight of our platforms um to get the word out of all the the awesome advice that mary shared with us um Give Mary a look on uh, ruralonpurpose.com and also check her out on Twitter and Lincoln. She's very active on Lincoln. Um, she has a ton of great articles. So if you are a Lincoln member, I'm sure, Mary, they can tag you, right? They can say hi. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah. And Mary is very forthright with trying to help out. Her heart's in the right place. And, um, and, and I'm very happy, and I know Colin is, too, that we've met. And I'm hoping that we can go a lot farther together and, and working together and sharing with each other. So, uh, Mary, I would like to say thank you for coming on our show. I hope you come back sometime soon. Happy to. Excellent. Happy you give to. Us Great. Thank you, Mary. Great show. Thanks, yep. guys. Okay. Thank Take care, Mary. Bye. We'll talk soon. So that was Mary Doyle of Rural on Purpose, uh, dot com. You can find her on all the social media, uh, Twitter. And Lincoln, uh, I would go read a whole bunch of her articles on Lincoln. Uh, she makes a lot of good points. Very talented, very brilliant. Take call. Mary was excellent. I enjoyed it and learned a lot from her. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we're and we will invite her back. But I'm just going to share you some interesting stuff here. We got Veronica, uh, who's made a really interesting comment. And here we agree with Mary. We had to make the hard decision to cancel casual camping for May and working month by month. We don't want to catch or pass anything. 
and and that's exactly what's happening in a lot of these small uh, small communities out there. Um, they're in a tough bind, right? I mean, they're, it's a tough thing, and there's a lot of hard hard decisions being made right now. So what we're going to do now is um, our favorite, Colin. This is our favorite <laughs> part of the show. We like to call it. And here it is, our shameless plug. Plug. Yes, we have. We are not afraid to plug. And we save it for the end of the show. And this part of the show, uh, what we're doing here is we're we're talking a little bit what we got in the move and what we're working on, uh, what we want to share with you. So, um, of course, there's the A Travel Talk Show you're listening to now. We had Mary Doyle on the show today. Um, and that's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. PST on Facebook Live at sign A Canada Travel. And we will be here next Tuesday, 7 p.m. And stay tuned because I'll tell you who the guest is and it'll blow you away. Um, next is acanatravel.com. Colin? Yes. Best website, best website for planning, interactive, and booking because we put the money back into small and rural communities. We don't take a big percentage. We encourage you to spend money in the small and rural and urban centers of Canada. Mm -hmm. We are here for the tourism businesses. So please support acanadatravel.com. Yes. Come on, private or government? It's To me, that's not a tough choice. I mean, <laughs> come on, people. So this is where we're in a good position. We have been growing real fast. We're excited about where we're going, and we're so happy to have so many people come on board with us. Um, shameless plug, follow us. This show will be on everything. We post every day on most of our social media channels. Um, a lot of them we post different stuff because they're not all the same. Sometimes we post the same, sometimes different. So you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So we have a social media blanket out there. And uh, this will be on it. Our past shows are on it. All our interesting new stuff are coming up on board. But here's what's new. <laughs> here's what's new. We had a, a lot of good comments last week about our isolation vacation for post-COVID travel. Because you're not traveling now, but you should be traveling uh, after post-COVID. So what we're going to do, and we're just deciding on the feedback here, we're going to have what's called isolation vacation for post-COVID travel, meaning... We're going to come online, do a five-minute show, and we're going to feature adventures, clients, and communities across Canada. We're going to do it two to three times a week. It's going to be on this on this different type of format. And what we're going to do is we're going to educate Canadians on the hot spots where we have. Because how many years did we travel Canada, Call? That's 10. Uh, 10. 10 years. And we, we went and researched 6,000 parks, trails, and historic sites, lakes, and rivers. We went to research 1,023 small and rural communities. We brought it all back, and now we're building, and now we've got this great website, 18,000 pages of information, 16,000 photos. Did you know, Colin, and it's not on my notes, our videos on our A Canada Travel site 85% of them get more views than YouTube. That's impressive. They put that video on our site and then they mm -hmm. put it on YouTube. And I've been sharing a couple of examples online, but I want you guys to know just because we're not big corporation, just because we don't get $72 million of fun, like you know who, which we don't mention on this show because we don't <laughs> want to promote them. But here is the thing we work our blanks off for the tourism business because we love the people in it we are passionate about the people in it we are passionate about our friends in small and rural communities and we just want you guys to know that isolation vacation for post-covid watch for it on our channels because we are going to feature some incredible places we're going to have a great photo presentation and in some cases there'll be some videos so stay tuned for the isolation vacation for post-COVID travel. Here's who we have next week, bro. We're going out of country. We are bringing in Susan, Suzanne Cavanaugh, who is a tourism strategist for Creative Planet Media in Australia. Our cousins in Australia are coming to the big show right here. Nice. 
here. We're bringing in Australia because a lot of the issues Australia are facing, we're facing. We are like, we map out the same way in so many different areas. Now that is exciting. Yes. So yeah. make sure Tuesday, 7 p.m. PST, you join. So Colin, what we'd like to say to all of you out there is thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we, yeah. hope, we hope you learned a lot here from uh, our friend Mary. Um, I loved what she had to say, Colin. I thought it was fantastic. Yes. For Mary. Brewonpurpose.com. Check it out. Highly recommend it. Um, stay safe. Stay positive. Stay home. And play later on acarentravel.com. That's a simple rule book. Play later on acarentravel.com. But in the meantime, let's buck it up because we all want to go and have fun and go outdoors and travel and visit our friends and um, talk more and go visit all these small and rural clients. And we want to, we, we all want it, but you got to stay home. A little sacrifice, big gain, little, big, little, big. That's how it works. Okay. So thank you for all joining us. Watch everything. Oh, oh I got to put this up call. We got a little, we got a little <laughs> uh, virtual love out there. Love you guys. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. We, love you too, we love all of you. And sorry we couldn't post everyone, but hey, when you love listening to some expert and some strategists and you're exchanging, I mean, come on, prioritize. We've got to prioritize on a live talk show. And um, this is live. I know you guys think it's a big production and there's millions going into <laughs> it. I can tell. I can tell. Um, but it's been great. So um, uh, we'll see you next week. And Colin, you want to finish it off? I got to say, remind everybody to make the best that you can. Enjoy living in your pajamas. <sighs> Laundry day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you, everyone. It's uh, Greg and Colin, uh, acanatravel.com. We're the 18 brothers. We've enjoyed spending the night with you. And again, thank you for Mary Doyle for joining us. We'll see you live next week, 7 p.m. PST. Suzanne Cavanaugh from Australia will be joining us. And, uh, Stay safe, stay positive, stay home, play later on acantravel.com.